Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. If you have a BMW with the N20 or N26 engine, we'll demonstrate it on BMW 5 Series F10 guys. But uh, if you have a 3 Series other ones as well guys that use that engine and you have an oil leak and you need to guys remove and replace the oil pan or you have an oil leak or have to replace the oil pan because it's cracked, we'll explain guys what needs to be done, how to remove it, how to replace it guys. Now, it is complicated video guys and you need to watch until the very end because we did screw up we didn't uh, share one or two tips while we were going so i want to cover that as we go towards the end because otherwise guys you can damage things that are very expensive another thing now guys uh quick introduction every single car we get at the shop including this one here we make at least 200 to 300 videos we take them completely apart why simply because our mission in the shop is to save you guys as much money as we can all we need in return please subscribe to the channel and like the video hopefully you'll find the information helpful if you guys need to buy a new gasket new oil pan anything like that we'll have the links in the description of the video below for your convenience check it out so let's continue now so first step we are going to jack the car up okay we're going to jack the phone and up always guys use jack stands never ever rely on the jack itself why simply because if that jack fails guys what's going to happen okay the car will fall on you and smash you guys and you're done so this is the first step now let's check guys okay what's underneath okay and what it looks like and what we need to do okay right here you can see it's very well covered bmw so it's really hard even to get to see the engine compartment here everything's covered with plastics from front to back so we're going to get the screwdriver now, 8mm socket, we're going to start, okay, you can see where we are under the car now, guys, and uh, we'll just start going towards the back, okay, and we'll start removing a few, a few screws that hold that plastic, guys, okay, to the body of the car, then we just start removing one by one, okay, one is there, second one now, perfect. okay one here so you can see so far guys quite a few screws some of those they can develop rust they can be a little bit hard to okay a little bit hard to remove sometimes they may feel like they're stuck but uh, if they don't want to go spray some penetrating spray let them stay and they should come out now that being said okay we're going to go to the other side now and we have exactly the same scenario what we have here now once we guys remove them i'm going to show you where each one of those is located on the engine on the lower engine cover that bottom engine cover so we know what to expect and how to remove that thing okay that that screwdriver is amazing guys this too is it's we've used it for more than three years and it's so handy we'll have the link listed in the description of the video below for your convenience so feel free to check it out if you need to now a few more there so so far guys okay we have three four five six seven eight nine nine screws working on the tenth one now okay this is number 10 now and we still have right here we have two in that corner one in the middle that's number 11 two in this corner here number 12 Okay, let's do number 13. And we have on the front, I think we have four more that we need to remove. Okay, check it out. That's where the lip is here. It's a little bit scary how complicated this, these machines are, but it's not too complicated to work on once you know what to do. And as I said, guys, we'll have more than 200 videos taking completely this car apart and putting it together and show you guys how to fix things in the meantime. okay perfect so now go ahead pull it out okay you can see and this is the lower bottom engine cover out of the way let's pull it out and i'll show you guys okay where each of the screw is located okay so you know what to expect so starting from this side this is the front of the car one two three four here you have five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen guys and here seventeen okay all together 17 screws that we removed 
so first step that we need to do open the hood once you guys open the hood you can see that support right here it needs to come out guys okay we need to remove it first uh, before we do that we'll disconnect the mass airflow sensor press in there pull the cable comes out pretty simple right now what else we need to do okay right here we have one bolt with 16 millimeter socket all the tools and parts that we use guys you can find okay the links in the description of the video below for your convenience second bolt guys okay and that thing okay comes out right we don't even need it anymore now this is guys the whole air filter box assembly here so we'll demonstrate what needs to be done okay to get it out of here guys pretty simple first let's use a small flathead screwdriver guys okay and we're going to uh, go ahead and get that uh, hose clamp loose so okay, i'm trying to see which one's better with the light or without the light i think it's a little bit better with the light so we'll do it like that okay so getting that thing loose now okay to the point that it's not holding anymore now we'll go ahead and remove the cover by unsnapping three clips here okay perfect now pull it out a little bit grab right there and pull that cover out now go ahead and grab guys your air filter out of there as well but before we continue super important that you don't drop anything in your intake manifold otherwise you can say bye bye to your engine guys that will be catastrophic if you drop something you don't know about it you start the engine it sucks that inside smash the heat the pistons valves you're done now grab that air filter guys and pull it out it does get stuck sometimes so what else guys okay we need to do here we have one board with a torx okay it looks like this is a torx either 25 or 30 okay we're going to see in a second which one exactly it is i think it's this one here no it's actually a torx torx 30 torx, torx 30 star looking bit let me show you what it looks like okay this is the bit itself guys right there perfect now we're going to go ahead and remove that bolt just get it out perfect coming out pull it up now go ahead grab it here we have one guide okay that's going to come out so okay we need to figure out how we're going to press that thing in so we can pull that uh, whole box assembly out okay that's a million dollar question now so what we need to do okay right here now we're going to go ahead pop it out perfect okay it's loose there now we need to come out of these holes okay this side pull it out and get the whole box assembly out what's happening now guys okay you can see the whole air filter box assembly with the air filter and everything else is out of the way and if you need to work on your engine you can see how much room you have now so what we're going to do we'll actually remove that uh, that uh, you can see whatever it is that intake holes with the uh, extra okay extra uh, <coughs> box right here so we'll get that thing out so we can uh, gain a little bit more room guys because as you can see uh, this is right in the way here so we cannot work so much um, all we have to do right here we need to get that hose clamp loose with a flathead screwdriver okay let me just uh, try to focus down there so you can see the action It's very important again not to drop anything in your intake manifold. Okay, this one came out, guys. Okay, all the way. Now we're going to get that back and actually cover it there. Okay, you can see we have some oil deposits, but that's normal for turbo engines, guys. So now right here on top, we're going to squish okay two ends like that okay let me let me see okay perfect so i can get a little bit of a better view guys for you so if i squish on each side okay this hose comes loose on this side we have two of those on the bottom squish right here disconnect the wiring harness okay and get that uh, breather hose out of there as well you can see how much room we open up now so once you guys remove that cover we're ready to drain the engine oil and let me show you okay where the uh, oil drain plug is located so you can just reach it through that hole pretty simple guys go ahead get it loose 
be careful not to break it. I think it's a plastic drain pork. I need to verify to make sure, but from what I can see, guys, we'll actually be dropping it open. We'll have video for timing chain replacement. As you know, guys, that's a very, very weak spot on that BMW, and we have a problem with the timing chain. So, video will be on the channel shortly. How to remove, replace timing chain, how to install new timing chain, all that will be there. So, oil is draining now, guys. Okay, this is the oil drain pork okay right there we're going to let it drain it will take it will take probably about uh, five to ten minutes to drain it good now one thing guys uh, you want to make sure okay one thing that you want to make sure is that uh, you guys do not burn yourself use gloves okay use also okay use also not only gloves but eye protection as well and it looked like somebody stripped the thread out of that oil drain pork check it out from what we see, I think somebody stripped the thread on that thing because it's plastic and they over tighten it. So we might need to replace that one as well. So we found guys what the problem is right here. Okay, you can see this is the oil drain pork. Now you're supposed to have a big fat oil ring on the bottom. Okay, whoever did the last oil change, they lost it guys and they weren't even smart enough to install an oil ring. What they did, they use a pipe sealant guys and uh, this pisses me off guys that thing is not very expensive new drain pork with the seal and everything guys we ordered ours we will have the link in the description of the video below and you can see guys uh, where uh, you can get it from so we'll go ahead get the new one and install it now so we're installing the drain pork we'll just get it tight do not over tighten that thing guys this is plastic okay this is plastic guys it's very important not to over tighten it Okay, we'll find the torque specs and we'll share them in the description of the video below so you can see what the torque specs are. Okay, otherwise you can say bye bye to your uh, uh, to your oil pan. Perfect, and we just get it out and we can continue, guys. Next uh, with the next step now. So let me show you now, guys. We're going under the car here. Okay, and we need to remove that cover. Okay, you can see that whole cover here. So there is a few screws that we need to remove with the 8mm socket that we used for uh, removing actually the uh, engine bottom cover. Okay, all that needs to come out. You can see very long cover. It comes all the way to here guys, to my side. Because otherwise we won't be able to reach without removing that cover. I like the way this BMW is insulated underneath, covers everywhere, so that makes uh, makes the car ride really nice, really smooth. No uh, road noise. Also, it protects the it protects the body guys from corrosion, from overspray, from getting too wet too. So all that guys, everything adds up. So. Here now we'll have a few more that we need to remove. Okay, we're uh, done on this side. So now we need to come towards me here and uh, we will need to take care of a few more. So we're going underneath now, guys. Again, I just screwed it a little bit up. And uh, here we have a few, a, few more, uh, a few more bolt screws that I said that we need to remove. Towards the front, there is a few. Okay, right there you can see. So you can see that cover started dropping seriously now. And we should have one more screw only holding in that left corner on the driver's side. And after that, I think we'll be able to remove. Yep, everything came down all the way. So this cover is out of the way as well. So this is it guys right here. That's the two that we need next. We'll have the link in the description of the video below. Okay, check it out guys. Something that definitely guys you need. Uh, this is called E12, E8, E8 reverse torque socket guys. Uh, all, the, all the oil pan bolts are with that socket guys. So 
from that point on things will be okay things will be a little bit more complicated why because there will be not so much room to show show you but make sure guys you stay with us we'll try our best also at the end when we remove everything we're going to show you with greater detail more things and we'll explain things while we go so you know what to expect so let's start on it now so now guys okay we're getting the torques okay torques start start looking bit and right here you have one cooler okay that we need to remove okay you can see that's the cooler you can see where the socket is okay down there so we have two bolts on top okay two on top and then uh, we'll show you what else you need to do guys huh. so eventually it's getting loose i'm working on the second one now so let me remove those i don't waste your time guys and we'll continue okay let me focus again so you can see the boats okay these are the boats okay all the way down there one here one there so i got the first one out guys okay give me just a second okay i'm going to switch hands so i can uh, focus and then we'll be working on the second one so the boat itself okay it's not very long that's what it looks like uh, and it's uh, with reverse torque sturdy socket so now okay we're ready to remove the second one on top here i got it loose already so all i have to do take it off you can see almost almost out now ah, i just dropped it okay right here perfect this is guys the second ball now we have two more okay two more just like that on the bottom side guys okay that we'll need to remove two more just like that on the bottom side and we'll need to go from underneath to do that so now we are going underneath okay i'm coming from this side guys so i can show you okay and right there that's where the oil cooler is located okay you can see so we need to go ahead and remove the two two balls that we have on top those guys attached on the bottom side okay right there so we need to go ahead and remove those and down there it's uh, your sensor guys for the oil level i think an oil temperature might be there as well we'll do some research and let you know guys you can see quite complicated design everything is so so close together but it, it is doable guys it's not too too terrible So getting them loose now. Okay, perfect. Both of them guys came out. That cooler is not attached anymore. We can just put it to the side. Okay, you have to be careful not to break things. So be extremely careful. That plastic cover that we need to remove there now. That's next thing that we'll be doing guys. So we can uh we can get that thing out of the way as well trying our best guys to do as much as we can to show you things and uh, what needs to be done so let's see how we can do that now so going underneath again now guys we got the tools and everything so let's go ahead actually okay and remove okay remove that plastic cover that we were talking about there okay it's extremely uncomfortable very very cold morning by the way laying on the concrete floor today is miserable but when you have to do the work you have to do it guys so okay just removing these bolts now there with the 10 millimeter short socket shallow socket perfect one is out now working on the second one I can even see my bread I think in the morning right now perfect the second one out now one there in the corner perfect 
perfect and let's see if we have any more no that's all guys it looks like we have only three and that thing is out now okay completely out perfect so coming underneath one more time okay and uh i need to pass one too guys okay right there okay perfect uh this is the clip removal too so now what we'll be doing we need to disconnect the wire okay this is the wire for the uh, oil sensor there so press on each side and pull it out guys they do get stuck sometimes so you gotta make sure that you pull it out it has one clip that it attaches to so that's why we have uh, the clip removal too, so we can pry it out. Careful not to break anything, don't pry, don't pry on plastic, on the plastic part of the pen too, because you don't want to break guys. Okay, perfect, right that. So we got guys, okay, that E8 socket. Okay, that's the reverse torque. So let me just lay underneath the car. Okay, excuse me for being a little bit chaotic now, but okay, this is the E8 socket, guys, and we are going to start. Okay, removing now. Okay, quite a few, quite a few bolts on the open. So we have quite a few bolts that we need to get loose all the way. You're going to see. Now we're working on the second one. Perfect. What I like about the BMW engines, guys, they're sitting a little bit sideways. You're probably wondering why they did that. Okay, the uh, reasonable explanation behind that is that uh, they want to make, okay, to bring the center of the weight of that car, okay, as much lower as they can. The car gets, uh, it, it's more stable, it drives better, it's more responsive, okay, suspension feels better. And if that engine is sitting too high up, okay, the balance will be off. And uh, by putting the engine a little bit sideways, kind of like diagonal, they can bring it down more, okay. That center of the weight, guys, uh, uh, they, they bring it down and makes the car way, way more stable on the road. So that's what I like about it. Now, you can see we're just removing the first one now. We got a few bolts loose. One is out. Okay, let's show what it looks like. Okay, that's how long the bolt is. Now, we're going to uh, remove the second one, guys. So, once we're done, I'm going to count how many bolts we have and all that stuff, so you know what to expect and you don't damage anything in the way. Second one coming out, perfect. Now, working on the third one here. Okay. Working on this one there, guys. Fourth one now. So you can see how uh, the oil pan, okay. He has curves, okay, in each one of those kind of like feels like a halfway canal, half pipe. Okay, this is guys where you have, you have a bolt. Okay, number four. So, let's see what else we got here. Now working on number five, guys. This one we actually have not gotten loose already. And you can see how limited of a room here it is. So we definitely, guys, okay, we definitely need a lift for the shop, but uh, we will we'll be getting one soon. Okay, guys, so we got the impact. 
we will have to do them by hand a little bit uh, those are super super tight you will never think that they're so tight little bitty balls but they are guys so we'll uh, at least loosen them by hand okay and then get the impact and remove them so we don't need to worry about actually and screwing each one of them for so long now if you guys need to see any specific video if you have any problem with your uh, specific BMW guys any car just let us know guys okay we're actually even thinking about doing a live answering questions session so uh, that I think will be will be very helpful guys one is out second one Third one. So you can see so far two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight balls that we have removed. Now we're working towards the front a little bit. We will not be able to use any extensions there. So we're trying to see where we can reach those from because it's super, super limited room there. The subframe, okay, the suspension subframe, that aluminum part that you see, it's right there, so you don't have much clearance. That's one thing, guys. But we'll just go ahead and uh, remove it, okay, one by one. The good thing about those guys, most of them, they will go by hand. Once you get them loose, they will go by hand. That's uh, the positive thinking behind it, but... Sometimes if you have uh, silicone sealant, gasket sealant, they may get a little bit stuck, so you might need to just use the ratchet. It really depends if it has been removed before, if it's been reinstalled, how much silicone, how much sealant was applied between the oil pan and the engine block. Perfect. One more guys, this is bolt number nine. So we'll see if we can get 20 bolts out of that oil pan. It will be, it'll be quite a few, that's for sure. So now guys, we're still removing bolts. What is happening now, we have a bolt for the oil pan hidden under that engine mount right there. So what we'll need to do, we'll need to remove the driver's side engine mount. And in the meantime, guys, okay, let me explain now. Uh, we're going to get a jack, support the transmission side because the oil pan is plastic. You don't want to do that on the oil pan. Another thing, guys, transmission pan is plastic as well. Be extremely careful. And uh, we're going to support it and remove that bolt and uh, we'll keep explaining guys what we need to do in the meantime, okay? And uh, once we do all that guys, okay, we're going to explain guys what, what else we need to do, okay, to get that oil pan finally out of there because it's not an easy thing guys, it's not as easy as you will think it is. Uh, uh, first you think, okay, just a few little bolts to remove here and there, but it's not guys, it's a little bit of a complicated deal. So. Now, we're going to get the jack, we're going to position it there, we'll get a wood block and uh, we'll put it on the bell housing, okay, between, you can see where the transmission is right there. So we're going to just pump it a couple of times so it can hold the wood block in place. Oh, smash the camera. Okay, let me see if that will be staying there or I can probably hold it no, a little bit let me see no I need to get underneath there as well okay so always use a wood block otherwise guys you can say bye bye to your 
<laughs> transmission, you don't want to crack anything, right? All you have to do, just support it, don't put too much pressure, okay, just a little bit, uh, because thinking about it, guys, okay, the engine has some weight on the suspension, so we just need to go a little bit, okay, just one more time, let's go, perfect, okay, and we'll see how that will feel now, guys, and uh, we'll start moving, okay, start moving here the driver side engine bow but before we do that what we'll actually have to do guys we need to remove the intake holes okay this one right here we need to disconnect okay we need to start disconnecting a few lines here this one this is a vacuum line okay that we need to disconnect yeah okay this is for the purge valve now we have that sensor here that we'll need to uh let me see if i can disconnect this sensor or just grab it okay right here on each side okay this one came out okay so that line is not holding there anymore or you can just disconnect it from here one of the two guys but <laughs> i will i will have to pass the camera so i can squish it with two fingers okay this thing is out we need to disconnect the i think this is the t-map sensor this is the turbo map sensor right here ah it was almost out okay perfect and here guys okay now good thing okay we need to pull that hose clamp up okay to release it and then we have one on the bottom and that hole should come out. So uh, let's just get a flathead screwdriver, I think. Okay, right here, and we'll be able to pull that thing up. Careful not to punch a hole or something. Okay, guys, just like that. Now, this hole, okay, hold on, easy here, because that is plastic, guys. If, if you break that vacuum line, things will be bad so let's see where that hose claim is i think it's all the way on the bottom okay the metal thing is all the way on the bottom that we need to release on the one on the other side so we got it loose guys once we get it out i'll show you guys that hose claim how we got it loose because it's a little bit of a ridiculous design okay so we need to be careful how we get everything out so we don't break things right because there is no need to break more things than we fix so this is it guys this is the turbo pipe right the intercooler pipe right here guys so how we got it out okay pretty simple so uh, you need to get a screwdriver okay two screwdrivers you need to open those things usually it's closed okay let me show you now it's closed like that okay it's closed like that so we'll need to get a screwdriver okay open it on each side okay let me show you open it on each side okay spread it out and it needs to come on the bottom out here otherwise it's not gonna work out guys and when it's like that you pull it out okay you can see just like that so what we need to do now guys okay we remove two bolts okay let us show you now where they're uh, we already got them loose guys i want to show you okay we have one bolt right here that we got loose okay one bolt here and one over there in the corner uh, we pre-loosen those okay these two so we don't waste your time okay there with uh, that reverse torque socket guys the same socket uh, the same style socket that we've been using uh, it's actually i think it's e12 yep that's an e12 socket guys right there so that's okay now guys and we have two more okay two more that we need to uh, remove we have the uh, engine and the transmission support on the bottom side so it cannot turn that way okay and the two bolts that we'll be removing now guys okay they will be okay right there okay you can see uh, you will have them right here in the hose two of them now so that's what we're working on now guys we're getting these two bolts uh, loose now right there in the hose and once we get them loose okay there is one more bolt hidden we will show you not so hidden but it's not so obvious because you don't think about it so much we'll go ahead and get it out as well we have quite a few videos guys on that uh, that car that engine 
Uh, as you know, every, every car we get at the shop, we make two to three hundred videos, guys. If we remove the engine, we even more, make more because we make a whole list of videos how to rebuild engines, how to take everything apart, how to put it together, torque specs, all that we share on the channels, guys, for your convenience and to provide you free information. So take advantage, guys. Please subscribe to the channel. Now, removing the second one there now. This is towards the left side. Now, this one will get stuck a little bit. Why? Because the engine will drop a little bit, probably. You have to make sure you support it good. I will even recommend to get a cherry picker. Okay, and support it from top if you need to. almost almost coming out now if you have any specific questions leave a comment below guys sometimes we might be busy we may not be able to make a video right away but other uh, i noticed that other people other uh, subscribers will answer each other questions so we can build that community guys to help each other okay that's very important so we can learn and teach ourselves how to fix our cars for free instead of paying okay hundreds thousands of dollars to go to the shops dealerships or anything like that so definitely guys okay is a good good thing in my opinion so we can shake it a little bit okay check it out now uh, the engine mount should be loose on this side so now okay we have the one on the very bottom guys okay this boat okay right there on the very bottom so that's the one that we'll be removing now and it's uh, with the same socket again or a little bit bigger next size bigger 14 it will be e14 socket guys the one that's sticking out okay getting all the wires out of the way this one doesn't get loose something we should have done before okay was to actually get that one loose before we remove the other ones because now we're putting too much pressure on the okay on uh, on that engine mount okay I'm trying to find a spot okay where that engine should be okay so let me lift it up a little bit okay so we cut one bolt okay we started one bolt that way it's going to hold that and now we're going to switch to the other one on the bottom again okay and see if we can get it loose now so we shouldn't have too much of a play there and that thing is tight i'll need to get the bigger tools so we're actually removing the bottom one now we got it loose guys okay it's a little bit of a a little bit of a complicated thing but you still have quite a bit of room to work with okay we'll be doing a timing chain replacement here as well so we'll have quite a few videos guys check it out Getting that bottom bolt loose all the way. Perfect. That's what it looks like. Now, we're uh, actually going to remove now the other bolts that we installed so that mount can, uh, can be loose and it's not in the way. I mean, uh, can be tight, excuse me, not loose. But now we need to get it out of the way, guys. So just the two bolts go ahead and remove them
going to move the engine just a little bit. Okay, so that thing can come out. Okay, now we have one. One wire connected to this one. We got it out and we just dropped some bolts underneath, guys. And this is uh, the bracket for the engine mount out of the way. You can see just like that. So we're going to go underneath now, guys. Okay, and I'm coming behind the tire so I can hopefully show you. Okay, perfect. Right there now, guys. Okay, we have three holes. Uh, we have three bolts that we need to remove with the 13 millimeter socket, guys. 13 millimeter socket, we have three bolts. They go in an angle now. It's very important that you don't mess them up. One of them is coming loose, second one right there in the hole. Now one more. Okay, right here. Perfect. Now, let's go ahead, get the impact so we can save you guys some time and just remove these bolts quickly. Very long bolt, second bolt now. Long bolt as well. Third long, third longer bolt. Two of them are the same size and one is a little bit longer than the other two guys. So now if I come here and I should be able to grab that engine mount out. Okay, that's just some very limited room, guys. And it came out. This is a very lightweight engine mod. I haven't seen one that light before. So you can see we got it out, just like that. So with the engine mount guys out of the way, we just have two more bolts that we need to remove. You can see how we can reach all that now. Uh, practically you don't have to remove the bottom part, we just removed it so we get a little bit even a better angle. Okay, so makes things a little bit easier. It's up to you guys. So uh, we're removing that one now, okay. You can see it just came out. Now we have one more that we need to remove. This is more towards the front guys, okay, more towards the front. I'm trying to get a little bit of light and something happening here, but it's not, it's not happening guys. So, okay, perfect. You can see where this one is. And hopefully we won't have more bolts guys. I'll explain where each one of them is located once we pop that thing out. It's plastic oil pan, so you have to be extremely, extremely careful with that, not to break it, crack it when you pry it or anything like that. So we are going to find out now if that's the only thing holding. So we got all the bolts loose now. Okay, moment of the truth guys. Okay, we are going to come. Okay, right there, grab it. It may feel a little bit stuck. It looks like the gasket is still holding on the left side. Perfect. Came loose. Okay, now let's see where we're hitting and how we're going to come out. This is the million dollar question now, guys. How we're going to come out of here. That is one interesting fact. We might need to jack the, okay, a little bit on this side up, maybe to come up. So what we actually did guys, okay, we got the three bolts on the other engine mount, the one on the, on the uh, passenger side, we removed the three bolts so we can jack the engine a little bit up, be careful not to damage anything in the way and just grab it guys, okay, and pull that thing down now. Okay, let me see now, it, it should come out guys. So we guys resituated, okay, a little bit the jack so we can get to there because otherwise we were hitting the jack and we couldn't get it out. It comes in an angle, okay, no, the other side, the other side, to, towards me, towards the left side, okay, like that. And now, okay, let's see, we should be able to come out, maybe, <laughs> maybe we're hitting the jack again. Okay, that thing is, that that's going to be the end of me, guys, don't pry on it too much because that thing is 
breakable so we'll see if we can come out of the jack okay i think it will come down we just have one millimeter left to be able to slide out of there so let me just get in there quick So we ended up guys supporting it on the transmission panel with a super big box so we have all the room we can clear so we can finally get that thing out because I'm getting tired of that thing I'm, I'm telling you guys this is ridiculous for that oil pan until we figure out how to do it now we're leaking a little bit of oil because I forgot to tell you guys okay that's why it's a good thing to watch the video because I forgot to I skipped that step I removed the oil level sensor this is your level sensor i removed it why because otherwise you, there is a chance to break it it has only three bolts on the bottom 10 millimeter bolts go ahead pull it out guys and you can see we removed the oil pan so as you can see guys that's how you remove the oil pan if you have an oil pan leak okay this is the gasket that is responsible for that and that's what you need to remove you just pull it out of the grooves replace it with a new one you're ready to go guys now uh, if you need uh, to buy a new gasket we'll have the link in the description of the video below check it out hopefully the video will be helpful to any of you trying to figure this thing out thank you for watching and see you guys next time